this is the postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series. I'm Satala Shraid, I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon. In this video, I'll take you through the Achilles tenotomy, which is part of most set to treatment for cleft foot. Also, we cover this topic partly in the Ponsetti video that we published earlier. We feel the coverage is not up to the standard of the exam. That's why in this video, we'll go in more detail. We learned from the Ponsetti serial casting, the first set of casts usually involve the elevation of first ray of the forefoot, and this is to align the forefoot with the hind foot. Then we do gradual abduction of the forefoot on the tailor head, and to around week four when we started ankle dorsiflexion. Premature ankle dorsiflexion can lead to a rock or bottom deformity, which is a difficult to treat complication. There are certain signs that we look for before we start dorsiflexion and subsequent uh, tenotomy. One of the easiest signs to look for is the forefoot abduction of up to 60 degrees. Once the forefoot reaches 60 degrees, probably we are abducted enough to do uh, dorsiflexion and subsequent tenotomy. However, not all uh, club feet can reach uh, 60 degrees of forefoot abduction, particularly a typical club feet. Therefore, we need to look for other signs that guide us to do ankle dorsiflexion. And one of the important signs is the heel. If the heel is a neutral or a slight valgus, then probably we are ready to do uh, ankle dorsiflexion, as we can see in this picture here. Here, the heel at least is neutral if it's not valgus. However, if the heel is still in varus, as you can see on this picture on the right, we are probably not ready to do ankle dorsiflexion. If we do, we might end to have a rock or bottom foot. The third and probably the most accurate sign is the ability to bulbate the anterior part of the calcaneus as it abducts out from beneath the talus. This is probably the most difficult to teach as well. Let me use this model to demonstrate this for you. In this club foot model, we can see the anterior process of the calcaneum, which I am pointing with my index finger. It is sitting immediately beneath the talus head. Here we can see the talus and the calcaneum are parallel to each other, both in the model and the x-ray. In Ponsetti serial casting, the first step is elevation of the first ray to align the forefoot to the hind foot. Then we do gradual abduction of the forefoot over the talus head. As we do so, the anterior process of the calcaneus come out from underneath the talus head. And this can be felt clinically. And once it's fully out, we can start the ankle dorsiflexion. Most of the time, this allows us to dorsiflex the ankle to around a neutral or maybe five degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. But often this is not enough and we still need to do tenotomy of the Achilles tendon to achieve 15 to 20 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion. So now let's go through these import, three important signs. Forefoot abduction of approximately 60 degrees in relation to the frontal plane of the tibia, a neutral or slight valgus of the calcaneum, and the ability to palpate the anterior process of the calcaneus as it abducts out completely from beneath the talus. Once we uh, reach that, we start dorsiflexion, and this usually, as I said, is not enough, and most of the time, it usually stops around the neutral to around 5 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion, it depends on the stiffness of the foot. Then, at that stage, we decide to do a tenotomy. We bring the patient usually to theater, to day case, and we remove the cast and we apply local anesthesia. There are two types of commonly used uh, topical local anesthetics. Uh, one is Imlacrim 5% and the other one Amitop. Uh, Imlacrim is a mixture of lidocaine and brilocaine, while Amitop is amethicane 4%. Uh, we prefer amitops because it acts quicker and usually more effective in children. And this has been shown in a randomized control trial as well. Later, we try to prepare everything before the patient arrives. And we usually calculate the dose of local anesthetic we use. There are two types of local anesthetic we use, either lidocaine one person uh, plain or one person with adrenaline. Our preference is uh, one person with adrenaline because this allows us to use a bigger volume. The usual dose is 7 mg per kg, and for a typical 4 kg baby, we would need a 4 times 7, which is 28 mg. And this will work like 2.8 ml. And we can use 1.4 ml in each limb for bilateral club feet. Here, uh, as I mentioned, we, this is already prepared before the patient arrived. Uh, here I'm showing the two uh, type of knife uh, that I use. 
I prefer the brown cataract nut or beaver blade because it's short and very precise. And the size of the cutting edge usually is the size of the tendon in children. I don't prefer the uh, blue one because it's long and can damage deeper structure. And also I don't prefer to use the 15 blades because they're quite big and the cutting edge are quite long. So we'll prepare the theatre fully before the child arrives. It should be warm and we've got some music through YouTube or whatever. Uh, the parent usually sitting near the uh, child's head and usually feeding them and try to talk to them and to keep them calm. Uh, we prep the skin with the chlorhexidine, then we uh, use the draping from the knee uh, below. The, uh, we use the uh, insulin syringe uh, with uh, the amount, the maximum volume aspirated in the syringe. One mil usually is enough and we put it on both sides. And uh, put it the local anesthesia can make feeling the tendon a bit more difficult. But if you put it, then you massage the area for five to 10 minutes. Uh, usually it dissipates the fluid uh, in the area. Here, uh, my colleague uh, doing the procedure, she's feeling for the tendon. and use the cataract knife to do uh, the uh, percutaneous anatomy. Usually uh, the incision is higher, around one centimeter above the crease. Sometimes you can see a dimple in the skin. And you insert the knife vertical, then you cut from medial to lateral and you'll see a usual typical pop. Mm, you can see it probably now. I'm just gonna slow the video and magnify it, hoping that you could see the pop. It is easier to feel it rather than to see it. Here we are. Then we check how much ankle dorsiflexion. Uh, typically most of us look at the forefoot, but please, please try to Train yourself to look at the hind foot as well, see where the heel's sitting. After this, we'll do exactly the same on the other side. And once we finish both sides, we start the serial casting. And this is the final set of casts for this child. And this final set will usually stay for three weeks. After that, we apply the boot and bar. As you can see, we put a stock net around the thigh. And the purpose of this is to fold it later to give a nice finish for the uh, cast. And also for the same purpose, we go as high as possible with the soft roll. Again, the reason because we're going to fold it back to give a nice and soft finish to the cast. While you watch the, the cast application, there are some questions you might get asked in the exam. And these are a bit controversial. Question number one, for example, what do you do in a clinic? Hey, there are some uh, people, expert people, they do in the clinic. But I prefer to do in theater simply because I have more assistant in theater and I feel I'm not rushed. The environment is usually cleaner in theater than a clinic, but it's possible to do in the clinic. Some people do under general anesthesia. Probably this is not necessary for younger children, but if the children become older, eh, this might become necessary because when they become older, their muscles are strong, they can kick and they can cause eh, damage. If you see from this uh, picture, you can see the tendon is around three to four millimeter away from the neurovascular structure. So if the uh, child kicked while he's under anesthesia, probably could injure these uh, inadvertently. Uh, once we completed the below knee part uh, and before the cast is fully set, uh, we trim around the toes to expose the toes. The top of the toes should be completely free, but the platform for the toes or the underneath the toes should be uh, extended to the uh, end of the toes to prevent the uh, curly toes. Uh, this procedure is a, a two person procedure. Somebody holding the foot and the other person doing the plaster. And the uh, experience of plaster technician is really important uh, to produce good results. Now we finish the below knee uh, part, then we extend it to above knee, keeping the knee around 90 degrees or slightly more than 90 degrees of flexion. Uh, one important thing in this procedure really when you bring the parent to attend the procedure, uh, we explain to them this is really important for the child. When the child feel or smell their parent, 
it will help them to become more calm and relaxed. However, some parents might not be able to tolerate this and we told them if they feel uh, uncomfortable uh, at any time of the procedure, uh, there's a designated nurse that look after them and they can tell her and she can escort them outside the theater and we complete the procedure. Uh, having said that, I can't recall any, situ- any time where one of the parents has to leave before we finish the procedure. Most of the time, the mother attend, uh, but on a few occasions, some dads want to to attend the procedure, we have no preference yeah, as long as they are happy. Yeah, after the operation, the child can go home on the same day. Usually, advise parents to give the child simple pain killers such as paracetamol, and we advise this to be regular on the first day or two. And the idea is to prevent the pain uh, before the local anesthesia wears off. The potential complication, although they are rare, they can happen such as tight casts or the cast can get broken if it is weak or the cast slippage. We give our parent a, a contact number if this happens so they can reach us or if they cannot reach us, they can bring their child to the emergency department and we do that. So now we completed this site, uh, we'll move to the other site. As you can see, my colleague removed the dressing then he applied the Mabelex dressing on the other side. As I mentioned earlier, this will be the final set of casts for this child, and this usually stays for three weeks. After the three weeks, the cast will be removed and boot and bars will be applied. The boot and bar will be follow uh, one of the common regimes. By far the commonest is the first three months is full time. By full time, we mean 23 hours a day. Uh, the parent can remove the uh, the boot and bar for one hour uh, a day. This one hour could be one whole hour or it can be divided into 30 minutes twice a day or four times a day, 15 minutes each, according to the parent preference. And this will continue for four to five years. Probably this is the most common regime across the world, although there are a few other different regimes. Once uh, this side complete, the other side will be done exactly in a similar fashion. Stoken it will be applied to the thigh, and then soft roll and casting. And when you finish the procedure, make sure that the child will be fully cleaned before handed to the mom to take him to the day case, escorted by the nurse. And this will take us to the end of our video. I hope you find it useful for your clinical practice and for your exam.